Very welcome back. Now, many of us end up with mould growing in our homes, especially in the winter. Not my house. No. Just saying. Anyway, Jordan is now to discuss mould, misconceptions, and how we can prevent it is microbiologist Hugh Kinsley. How are you, Hugh? I'm very well. Good to you. see you. What is mould? So mould is just another type of fungus that we have in the world. You know, when we think of fungus, we think of the mushrooms on our breakfast plate. We think of truffles and fancy restaurants. So the difference with mould is, instead of growing these big mushrooms, they grow these tiny fuzzy filaments called hyphae. And you can imagine these like kind of roots of a tree. They kind of mm -hmm. dig down into the substrate and that's how they eat and they grow. And you know, like we'll see them in the house. You might have seen a bag of mouldy oranges or some loaf of loaf of mouldy bread. He's been so, in your house. You should see his lunchbox <laughs> in the kitchen in there. Yeah, they, they, they wear oranges. I think they're raisins now. That's what they look like in the lunchbox. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, mould's more common in households in the winter time. Why is that? So in the winter time, you'd imagine that we're just spending so much more time indoors because it's cold outside. So when we're indoors, we're breathing out wa watery air. You know, we're cooking pots of pasta. We're drying our clothes and I'm guilty of this myself. We'll have long, hot showers. So we'll have really, really damp environments inside our house. And then there's a ventilation issue. It's cold outside, so we don't want to open our windows and let all the heat out. So if you think back to your kind of secondary school geography days, what happens in the water cycle? We have really hot, humid air inside our houses and then our walls are colder. So that hot air turns back into water on our walls and it's those condensation spots that mold will start to grow. I, I lived in a student accommodation when I was about 19 or 20, and one of the bedrooms looked like an episode of Stranger Things. <laughs> that, it was black <laughs> from about halfway across the ceiling. So that, uh, that answers a lot of questions. Yeah, no, but look, I know you and I are slagging things up and saying your house, his house, uh, his lunchbox and whatever. But is it a sign that it's a dirty house? No, that's the misconception. See, it doesn't mean that your house is dirty. It doesn't mean that you're not cleaning your house. It doesn't mean that you have to tear the house down. It just means at that particular point, the conditions are right inside your house for mold to grow. You know, you've given it a nice cozy kind of mold hotel or a motel, yeah. you know, it's a spot on. Oh, see what he did there. <laughs> this is why he's on the big money <laughs> full of these things today. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so uh, they're the perfect environment for mold to grow. They're not too dangerous. You know, we get mold in our, our food. You know, it's in soy sauce. It's in our cheese, you know, it's Christmas. We'll be having our fancy blue cheeses, our camembert, our brie. It's already there. And if that's there, we don't tear the house down. We just either get rid of it if it's not the stuff we want, or then we can just clean it or even just prevent it in the first place. Okay. So are these reasons you just stated the sole reason for mold, or could it indicate that there may be another problem in the house? Could it be leaks or anything else? Well, that's it. If it's a bit more serious, and as you say, it's covering an entire ceiling, then it could be a leak. And that's outside the whole realm of the basic issues of just ventilation and moisture. They're the two big things that we can focus on. If it's just small patchy areas, we can fix that ourselves. If it's larger areas and it's recurring is the main thing. That means there might be a leak in your house or there might be an issue with your ventilation and your vents that you can get checked out. Okay, well, let's, let's see how we fix it and how we can prevent it. You've got an old machine that you brought in with you. What that, is this? That's it. So prevention is the best cure, as they say. So we can tackle moisture by a number of ways. This device here, this is a hygrometer. And essentially what this does is it measures the moisture content in the air. You know, I think in the studio, we're at about 49%. So we can rest assured there's no mold in here, I hope. Okay. Um, Stop looking at me, will you? No, I'm, <laughs> I'm not, not pointing fingers. I'm not pointing fingers. Come on. So it's not too wet in here. So as a rule of thumb, we want to keep this below 60%. If it's higher than that, that's when we'll see mold start to flourish in the household. Okay. So if you see that, if you have a device like this at home, you can say to yourself, okay, once it's past 60%, I'm gonna crack a window open in the morning time. If I'm working from home, I'll have the windows open. But it does get a bit too cold at home to constantly have them open. Mm -hmm. So therefore, we have other devices like this. These are just dehumidifiers. What these do is they draw out the moisture from the air inside our homes. Um, you can have electronic ones, you can have passive ones. I like this one here because I can leave this in my bathroom. I don't have to plug it in and it will reduce the moisture in the bathroom and then you can recharge it and it'll dry out again. Some of the larger types like this, you can have it running inside your household for hours on end. Mm -hmm. It doesn't cost too much per month to, to run it, but it really helps in reducing the moisture inside your household. And that's just a larger dehumidifier de there, is it? Yeah, they come in all shapes and sizes. Um, this is kind of the higher end one. Um, but they're all the same. They all work in a principle of just reducing the moisture. But I feel like the most cost-effective thing to do 
It's just every morning, open your doors and your windows. You know, my mum at New Year's, she'd always open the doors and windows. And well, that's say, to let the old, old year out and the new one in. Out with the old, in with the new. Yeah, so that's what I say to myself every morning as I'm shivering by the window. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing, yeah. man. It really is. And we I, have some household items here now. What are we using these for? So these are some common chemicals that we have at home. They're naturally already there. So we have bleach, we have vinegar, and we have hydrogen peroxide. Oh, yeah, that's the stuff we'd use to bleach our hair, basically. So you might find it in the pharmacy or in hair studios. Okay, so, so how do they work? So it depends entirely where the mold is actually found. So think of two common spots. We have the bathroom and the bedroom. Now in the bathroom, I'd recommend using a chlorine-based, i.e. a bleach cleaner. And that's because in the bathroom, we get these hard surfaces like tiles and showers and grout. And the bleach is able to just wash that away nice and cleanly. Now in the bedroom, you'd imagine our painted walls, they can be quite porous. So that means they have little tiny holes in them. And remember when I said mold has these little hyphae things, they're like mm -hmm. the roots of a tree. They dig down into these holes. So bleach can't reach them, but the likes of vinegar and the hydrogen peroxide, they're able to dig in and scoop out this mold from inside. Okay. Okay, so, okay, so that, that will sort that out here. And the, the thing with the paintbrush? So this is anti-mold paint. Again, if it is a recurring issue, this is one step further that you can go to. Imagine this kind of just like a paint with the weed killer you use at your back garden, and that'll mitigate the amount of problem you have with mold. Okay. okay. So there's plenty of tips and tricks, a bit of elbow grease, or you can opt for dehumidifiers. And what was the first machine? Uh, a hygrometer. A hygrometer. There you go. A so hygrometer. It's 100% preventative. Okay, absolutely. I, I, but, but I don't want one of them for Christmas. I'm just letting everybody well, know. Well, I got you in Secret Santa. Oh, I shouldn't oh. have said that. I shouldn't have said that. I'm going to get you a hygrometer. You've just blown it. I'm that sorry. was it. That was the surprise. Well, so ready. if you've got mold, there's, it's not a reflection on how you live or where, or where you live. It's just a simple solution and it can be cleaned. And you're not living in a dirty house. So we're all happy to hear that. We're all happy to hear That's that. That's it. It's, it's a natural process, you know. It's always be there. We'll never get rid of it. And it's there to stay. Okay. Good to see you, Hugh. Hugh, Thanks thank you so much. Have a mold free happy Christmas. <laughs> <laughs>